water, earth, fire, air. I spent the past month talking about how great Avatar is, and for good reason. I love pretty much everything the series has to offer, whether it be the two shows, the comics, and some of the games. However, the only bad thing to come out of the series is the infamous M. Night Shyamalan live-action adaptation released in 2010. I like to compare this movie to The Phantom Menace when it comes to first impressions. Star Wars Episode 1, which is considered the worst Star Wars movie ever made, was actually considered good by fans when it first released. Sure, the fact that, hey, you know, there's a new Star Wars movie out might have blinded some people's judgment, but at first, people liked it. Ten loved it, seven liked it or thought it was okay, and two are no longer Star Wars fans. <laughs> Fantastic. Go see it as quick as you can. It was better than old. I think the lightsaber battles were the greatest. It was good, dude. It was really good. So worth it. So worth it. The Last Airbender, on the other hand, was immediately hated by fans and newcomers alike. It sucked. It sucked. It's terrible. It's horrible. I really didn't like it. As a kid, I actually enjoyed the film, but that's because I was a stupid kid who didn't know how bad it was. It's actually one of my guilty pleasures, if only just to make fun of it. Regardless of my thoughts on the film, I still think that Avatar The Last Airbender is worthy of a good theatrical film, so today, I'm going to be going through some ways an Avatar movie could work and what I think a proper movie should look like. There are many directions a good movie could go. You could attempt to retell the show, create a new storyline, or make it about a new Avatar entirely. Before we get into any of that though, we need to first see why the movie fails objectively compared to the show. The first main problem with Shyamalan's film is that it takes away all of the charm of the characters that the cartoon had. None of the characters were as interesting as their animated counterparts, or even interesting at all for that matter. I feel like Shyamalan changed the characters' names intentionally because of their shift in personality, but I can't confirm that. If we're going to take an iconic character like Aang and make a live-action version of him, then the characters need to act the same. In Season 1, Aang was always a thrill-seeker looking for fun and avoiding responsibility. In the film, he was a boring sad sack the entire time. Nothing about him was fun or interesting. Sokka is another great example. In the cartoon, he's this quippy dude who's always cracking jokes or messing up in some slapstick way. But in the movie, psh, forget that, let's make him this edgy guy who wants to kill everybody. I killed them all. It's such a drastic change that it makes me hate him rather than see him as a good character. I could forgive the different and simply wrong-sounding pronunciation of their names, but why make him so boring? Them being established characters doesn't mean they'll be the same character even if they're directed differently. To use Star Wars as an example again, imagine if during the filming of A New Hope, Mark Hamill was given no direction at all. He would be a boring character that has a goal, sure, but no emotions to motivate him to reach those goals. He just wouldn't be the Luke Skywalker that we're all familiar with. This is why the first thing that not only a good Last Airbender movie, but any good movie needs, is a good director. Say what you will about Shyamalan, but he can sometimes be an awful director. I'm sorry, but if you can make Mark Wahlberg bad, then you are a bad director. What? No! If I had to make a recommendation, I'd have to pick someone like Joss Whedon. But if The Avengers is any indication, then I think he can do a fine job. He did a good job at mixing the serious scenes with the comedic and action-based ones, so I think he'd be a good choice. I think James Gunn would also be a good choice for similar reasons. I'm sure there are other directors who would also be great as well, but it's hard to get the best pick for the job, and that goes for about any other director I didn't mention. The next thing that makes The Last Airbender a bad film is its pacing and flow. The movie just does not flow naturally at all. They just jump from place to place with no rhyme or reason. You know that classic saying, it's about the journey, not the destination? Well, that doesn't exactly work if the journey is so boring and pointless that you'd rather eat broken glass than sit through it. I can understand how they weren't able to fit every single plot point from season 1 into the movie. It's a two hour film and you have to shove almost six hours into that time frame. I get that. My issue comes with how they chose the most pointless episodes to be in the film for no reason at all. They took the episode Imprisoned and implemented it into the film somewhat, when it was really just a pointless episode. I mean, shout out to Haru and his soon-to-be mustache, but he was really unnecessary in the show. Him being there didn't change anything, so why attempt to add this, his storyline in? The thing that truly irks me about the film is how they had the Kyoshi Warriors scene filmed, yet they only made it to deleted scenes in the DVD. The Kyoshi Warriors, or at least Suki anyways, ended up becoming very important later on in Season 3, yet they reduced them to just special features? On what planet does that make sense? Referencing other episodes is fine, such as the waterbedding scroll in the film. That was handled well. If they insist on retelling the show, they need to put the most important episodes in while still keeping the flow of the cartoon. The Season 1 episodes that I think definitely need to be in an Avatar movie are Episodes 1, 2, 4, 7, 8, 10, 12, 19, and 20. These are the episodes that are most important to the plot in the long run. The reasons I have asterisks next to 10 and 12 is because they should be there, but they aren't necessarily that important. 
Jet was a somewhat important character that didn't really do much but betray the group at first, but then come back later only to sacrifice himself. The plot doesn't necessarily require him in order to work. Episode 12, The Storm, is somewhat important, but just served as backstory. Don't get me wrong, backstory is very important to a character, but it isn't necessarily integral to the plot. If they're going to include a backstory like this, perhaps they'd do Aang's story of becoming frozen as a prologue of sorts. Like they show Aang being frozen in the iceberg, then cut to a title sequence, then pick up from where episode 1 starts. I think that would be a good way to give context to the character while also serving as an interesting opening scene for the movie. Think about how many movies have these awesome opening scenes, cut to a title scene, and then go into some character introduction. A good example of this is James Bond. The James Bond movies start off with these awesome action scenes where Bond is doing some action-packed spy stuff, then they cut to a title sequence, then go into exposition. How does The Last Airbender start? Well, we get a recreation of the cartoon's intro, which then transitions into a slow, redundant, and boring text crawl that just explains things. Sure, a text crawl works for Star Wars, but it doesn't work for every movie. I would think that someone like Shyamalan knows this, but you know, I guess not. Going back to character introductions, another character that needs a powerful introduction is Fire Lord Ozai. The introduction of an antagonist is just as important as the introduction of the protagonist. We never saw the Fire Lord's face until Season 3. Up until then, all we saw was a shadow in flames. It builds him up as this powerful and threatening character. To use Star Wars as an example for like the 80th time, we never saw the Emperor in person until Return of the Jedi. Up until then, he was a threatening and powerful villain who was just shrouded in mystery. They introduce him as Vader speaking to a hologram, and we never actually see him in person. Think of it this way, the Emperor is to the Fire Lord as Vader is to Zuko. They could tease the Fire Lord as a bigger villain and treat Zuko as the big bad for the first movie, then treat him as the big bad's little bad in the following movies. This analogy actually works perfectly because Zuko was conflicted about whether he wanted to join Aang or the Fire Lord from Season 2, much like how Vader had a similar dilemma in The Empire Strikes Back. So how is the Fire Lord introduced in the movie? Well, we have Admiral Zhao speak to him directly by name in a setting that has to be labeled the Fire Nation for the audience to understand. One of the biggest rules in not only writing, but media in general, is show don't tell, which is a big part of why this movie is so boring. They just explain the audience everything directly via text or by characters speaking directly to the audience. To introduce the Fire Lord, they should have Zhao speak to him in his throne room, you know, the one with all the fire. I think the audience will be able to infer that, oh, there's a lot of fire, this must be the Fire Nation. I can understand that they need to fit a lot of lore into a certain amount of time in a way where even the people who aren't familiar with the source material can understand, but it's not impossible. Now onto ways a Last Airbender film could actually work. Let's start with ways they could retell the show. So basically, we already have everything I stated here. We start with an exact recreation of the show's intro, but cut out all of the stuff involving Aang, and don't include the title just yet. Then, we cut to a flashback of Aang finding out he's the Avatar and running away on Appa, and, you know, maybe they include Momo too, just so they don't have to do the Southern Air Temple later on, getting caught in the storm and freezing himself. Zoom in on the glowing arrow and show the title with the TV show's theme playing. Then they introduce Katara and Sokka, have them meet Aang, bring him to the village, and I don't actually mind how they got Zuko to the Southern Water Tribe in the movie, so maybe they could leave that, but they should probably skip the abandoned Fire Nation ship from Episode 2, but then otherwise do 1 and 2 in its entirety. Perhaps use that final scene of Episode 2 where they're on Appa as a way of exposition without it being forced. Then the group goes to Kyoshi Island, knowing that Zuko was following them. They spend a bit of time there where we get to meet Suki and the rest of the Kyoshi Warriors, and we have Sokka and Suki start some love interest stuff. After they leave there, they do the Winter Solstice episodes while maybe leaving out the Zuko and Iroh side story from part 1. If time allows, they could include Jet or the Blue Spirit episodes, but if not, that's fine. From there, they start the Siege of the North and boom, they got a, they got a decent movie. Now this is provided that all the characters act the same as they do in the show, they find a way to introduce the Fire Lord, introduce Azula at the end, have a good director, and make all the iconic scenes as close to the original as they could possibly get, then it looks like we got a good retelling of Season 1. Of course, the only real way to tell the story is through the cartoon, which I touched on in my Ben 10 review, but this is a great way to make a film that doesn't suck. Another route they could possibly go with an Avatar movie is have it take place after the events of the cartoon. In my Ben 10 video, I suggested adapting The Search into a live-action film. For those who are unaware, The Search is an official comic book that has Aang and Team Avatar on a quest to find Zuko's mother, which is one of the biggest questions that still existed at the end of the series. There are other official Avatar comics that could also function as movies, but I'm more familiar with The Search, so I'll use that as an example. The Search was actually originally pitched to Nickelodeon as a 90-minute TV movie, but the network declined in favor of The Legend of Korra. Given this information, one can only assume that creators Michael Dante DiMartino and Brian Konietzko were ready to make this and really wanted to. I personally would love to see an Avatar movie like this, even if it is animated. Since it's a comic book, it would be a lot easier to make it animated, but live action could also work out. The only foreseeable problem is that people who didn't see the series wouldn't understand the story, and they would lose a chunk of their audience as a result, but it could still work out. 
Another idea I wanted to talk about is the possibility of a live-action movie set in the Avatar universe, but about an Avatar that isn't Aang or Korra. The first few Avatars that come to mind are Wan, Kyoshi, and Roku. These three each have simple enough stories that could potentially be fleshed out a bit and turned into films. Let's start with Avatar Wan, the first Avatar. Wan received a two-part origin story in Season 2 of The Legend of Korra, but it could really work as a movie as well. It's a simple story of a guy who goes from a peasant to a hero. It's a storyline we've seen time and time again in numerous films. But for those people who haven't seen Korra and don't know about Avatar Wan, it could be very interesting to see. It would have to have a decently sized budget considering all of the crazy special effects it would need for like the bending, the spirits, and the lion turtles. Most people don't realize how expensive CG is, so I wonder how that could be handled. They could even get Steven Yeun, the voice of Wan, to play him in the film. He looks somewhat similar to his character, and since he isn't on Walking Dead anymore, his schedule is likely more open to other projects. I would love to see Steven Yeun play Wan. Steven Yeun, if you're watching this, make, make this happen. An Avatar Kyoshi film could also be very interesting. Kyoshi is an Avatar we don't know much about, other than that she fought Shin the Conqueror and created Kyoshi Island, but because we don't know much about her, there's room to include a new storyline in which she does a thing. Honestly, I don't know what kind of storyline they can make, but it's so open to interpretation that you could do a lot with it. Avatar Roku is another Avatar that we don't know much about, but still has enough story that a movie could be made about it. He got an origin story episode, but it was so compressed that it felt rushed. My idea for a Roku movie could start off with Roku and Sozin hanging out and being friends, then Roku finds out he's the Avatar, and later on Sozin becomes the Fire Lord. They could then skip to many years later, where Roku is a full-fledged Avatar, and Sozin is a tyrannical dictator on a warpath, and Roku has to try and stop him. I definitely think they should change the ending a bit so that Roku doesn't die in a volcano eruption, but rather make it so that Roku and Sozin fighting during the comet causes the volcano to erupt, which kills Roku, and Sozin starts the war. It could be a bit more of a political thriller in the sense that Roku is trying to stop this war while Sozin is trying to start it. I don't know if it would be as exciting as some of the other ideas, but it could cater more to the adult audience. The last idea I wanted to bring up is a live-action film about an entirely new Avatar. Perhaps the one directly after Korra, or maybe one many years later set in modern day. For reference, I recommend you check out the fan film Avatar The Next Wave. It takes place many years later where Bending and the Avatar have fallen into myth, and a guy discovers he's a waterbender. I definitely think that an idea in the same vein as this one could work out. This could cater to the audience who is unfamiliar with the Avatar universe, because it would be necessary to explain what the Avatar is. You wouldn't even need to recap the events of the original show or Legend of Korra, because they won't be necessary to fully understand the story. It could go about our protagonist's attempt to learn more about the Avatar and attempting to learn the elements himself. It would be a challenge to do so since Bending has become a legend in this universe, so nobody would believe them or try to help them. It would be somewhat inexpensive to do because not much bending would be needed. Another potential route is that we can look at a new, full-fledged avatar as they take on a big new threat. I basically just want to see an avatar fight people with modern technology like guns and explosives. It would essentially be a superhero movie, but set in the Avatar universe. It doesn't have to explain anything at all, it could just serve as a fun, summer blockbuster where you could just turn your brain off and watch someone blow stuff up with fire bending or surf with water bending. So those are all the ideas that come to mind when it comes to making a live-action avatar movie. If I had to pick a favorite, I would like to see either an Avatar Wan movie with Steven Yun, or another attempt to more accurately retell the show but with a better director, writing, etc. I know that nothing I've ever suggested in this video will likely ever happen, because they would need the original writers in order to make it decent, but DiMartino and Konietzko don't have the rights to the Avatar franchise anymore. Nickelodeon, and by extension Viacom, own the rights, and we all know how they like to treat good series. The mistreatment of The Legend of Korra is a prime example of this, so I don't expect them to give the Avatar franchise the respect that it deserves. No joke, they aired the last Airbender movie recently as opposed to something decent like, you know, maybe the original two shows. I really wish that Nickelodeon actually cared about their IPs instead of just airing bad sitcoms and reruns of Spongebob. I don't blame them because that's what makes the money, but they treat one of the greatest franchises of all time like dirt. The only way I could see something like this actually happening is if a big budget fan film gets kickstarted. If anyone with film experience is watching this, then get on that. Uh, write a screenplay, get a kickstarter going, because you could be the one to save the Avatar series. My name is Matt aka Chunky Games, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.